How's everyone going? Welcome back to another Courage 998 model railway video. Uh, MTMR model railways is the correct name. Uh, today, as you can see by the title, we have our first in depth review video having a look at the Ixon models J class. So yeah, by now I've already had the models operating for just over six months, probably a little bit more actually by the time this video came out, or both came out and actually filmed. Uh, but yeah, so I think it's about time we can have a proper chat about some of the the good, the bad, and the what could be or what could be approved, or the future of these models. I should probably also say about them. So anyways, let's get into it. Alright, we're made it to the desk. Uh, time to take a um, desk approach look to, in this review. Uh, we've got obviously 515 and 549 currently lined up in front of us. Let's have a quick spin. Um, let's talk about some of the things of the model. Uh, we'll go through, and then we'll go through it. Um, so we'll have a look at some of his details now. And then we'll go into um, some of its... Uh, Goods and the bads. Right, let's begin spinning the tail, yes. We'll spin our anti-clockwise this time, because I can. Um, so, we've got 515 on the uh, on the front and 5149 in, in the rear now. Um, firstly, going over onto a side profile, we can... We probably should have done the front first, but oh well. Onto the side of the profile, we can have we have the um, we can have a nice look at some of the added details at the side of the model. Uh, you got your air compressor uh, off to the side. Uh, got your very nice linkage, um, and yeah, got all your you can see all your fitted parts on the top as well. Your whistles, uh, your dome. Um, it's all really nice. And obviously to its number plate. The number plate is not an etch number plate, it's just a um, decal. Moving along to the tender, you've got your, again, one of the main things I was talking about in the review, uh, sorry, in the unboxing was the fact that there are uh, shunter steps fitted. This was um, a later in their life's uh, operation when they became shunting locomotives more than anything, not as mainline uh, locomotive, uh, not as mainline engines. So, uh, if anyone has noticed, yes, the one of the handrails is missing off uh, the coal tender on uh, 515. Kind of unfortunate. The engine has been sitting in my room for a little while now in preparation for this video, so no idea where it's gone, or what's happened to it, but. Um, uh, with the future plans of this model, it's something that should hopefully, can hopefully be sorted out, but, yeah. So, re moving on to the back of the engine, uh, also another thing, obviously, yes, the tenders do have rotating bogies, unfortunately that now is a thing that has to be said. Uh, we've got, again, the number plates fitted onto, on the rear of the engines, I think the old video is slightly sideways now as well. Um, and unfortunately the engines aren't actually aligned either, so that's, yep, we've got the number, uh, we've got, on the back we've got, we have got our directional headlighting, uh, well, marker lights to be more accurate, um, you got the light up the top working and then the two bottom, uh, lights that work when, uh, when the engine comes towards you, you also got a hole on the tender that allows you to fit one of the, uh, added accessories in that comes supplied in the box of either a fake um, t 
tail light, a uh, fake headlight, another um, uh, lamp, uh, lamp hook, or something else. I can't remember what was actually available. Again, we've got our proper Simline KDs with the, and these ones are actually extended length a couple as well. They're not uh, so slightly different to the standard um, number five, number one forty eights. Moving on to the uh, oil tender now, you can see there's a massive oil tank, cylindrical oil tank that's been fitted uh, fitted onto the tender where the coal um, set component would have been on the uh, on the culvert, obviously. And you can see how the riveting has changed to match that, which is a really nice little detail of that. Um, again, shunter steps. Uh, this is now obviously number 549. We'll have a look into the cab later on. Uh, also intruding, you can see the little white connectors that hold the, uh, hold the um, tenders and the engines. That, yeah, well, it gives you electrical connection and then you've got the rod underneath which holds the uh, pair together. Um, if you want to know how we put these on, this was shown in the unboxing video. Uh, it's a bit tedious. It's definitely not hundred it's not impossible and it's not impossible to remove them either these uh, but uh, sure well as they are not simply made anyways we can now see the piping and stuff from this side of the engine you got your injectors uh, and stuff also fitted you got your reverser one of the keen eye we have already realized you've got your uh, annoy a rather annoying um, pickups being fully visible here um, uh, but get, word, get it as you are and yeah moving back to the front you got a working headlight you don't have working marker lights though and you've obviously got your two deflectors per locomotive you can see in the headlight though you can actually see the um, uh, circuit board that's inside it <laughs> so that's uh, that's only a minor little thing. But yeah, so there we go. That's our quick detail spin around of the engine. You also got a front, working front coupler, which is really nice. So um, these engines were used as shunters in the latter of their lives. So having a front coupler is actually pretty nice. So you can actually um, kind of do shunting with it. That I already have. So yeah, uh, let's go on. Let's have a look at speak about what are the, some of the good positive things about this model. So the first thing I would like to say is, obviously, in terms of the good things, the model does look really nice. It's very well made. It's uh, it's made out of a white metal construction, so uh, they also have a bit of heft to it, which is what, something you need, especially since steam locomotives aren't. Um, they struggle with power due to how much smaller they are to the diesels, and you can't maximise on the weight. Um... The race car has nearly all, of, all the components. The running gear is nice. You've got everything moving, including the um, once I can't remember what it's called. That top bar in the um, uh, in the motion does actually move back and forth um, uh, with the um, uh, when it's in motion, which is really nice. Most most of the things are pretty good, are mainly in terms of the detail wise. Does look really nice. Um, does look like a J. When you look at it, it looks like a J class. Uh, paint colors are pretty much are pretty much mostly accurate. Yeah, shape. You can got the shape right. It's even and it's got your um, uh, in cab detail as well, which is also uh, which is nice. Which is all isn't always the easiest to see, as you can easily see. It's got some stuff, uh, some in cab detail, and things have been painted. Operational wise, uh, the engine does perform pretty well. I haven't had any major issues with it. It makes it around the 18 inch corners as um, even though it wasn't specified to do so. And this is not at any slow speed or anything. This is traveling at approximately 50% on the controller. It's uh, too easily making it around the corners. So, kudos. Uh, it's nice that they created the two different versions as well for the oil and the coal burner. Uh, where And with the specific details that clarify the differences between the two models not trying to um shortcomings like just putting it like a, a oil burning tender on it and calling it an oil burner it's got some of the extra details to uh, to compose of it 
Uh, yeah, uh, other than that, yeah, pretty well built model. I think, honestly, the model would probably handle pretty well over time. Uh, and they've have, had pretty heavy use on my end as well, so... Yeah, uh, it's also a nice, easy 21-pin socket in the tender to DCC if um, that's something that you would like to do. Time for some of the short fours, down fours, whatever you want to call it. Um, basically the opposite of good. We do apologise that the list seems a little bit longer because it's, the unfortunate thing is it's easier to notice issues than it is to notice things that are fully correct because you just assume that something's going to be more correct, uh, correct and then you start counting. Uh, which actually to add something else good, you've got also got your sprung buffers, which is really nice because real engines have them, why not the models? In any case, some things that are missing to the model, which uh, as clarified by, some, uh, by a mate of mine, there's a missing dome screw. Uh, on the top of the domes, there's usually a, uh, there should be a screw um, that basically um, allows them to, uh, to un uh, unhinge, the uh, unhinge the dome that is missing on these models. Uh, the valve gear is set up in the reverse position. This doesn't seem like uh, that. Uh, this doesn't seem that much of a specifically to Ixon's issue. This seems more like a problem with all steam locomotives because a lot of them are usually set up in the reverse issue, uh, reverse uh, um, position for some reason. Um, the valve gear is accurate. Mostly, it is quartered. However. We have a feeling that the quartering may have occurred um, uh, in reverse. So one side is actually correct and the other side is opposite to the, uh, to the quartering instead of um, pushing forward. So it, it, we knew something was off but we just couldn't tell what. And this is all based on J514... Oh, which one was it? 549. The Westinghouse compressor is too large for, uh, for the model um, and uh, is also a bit basic. Um, that's obviously not too much of a problem, but it is still a slight detail problem. There's no cab riveting. That somehow, uh, despite all the riveting on the tender, which is brilliant, riveting is missing on the cab. <laughs> Things like the um, deflectors and the plows, uh, cow catchers are slightly over, uh, are slightly thick. Um, that's only a minor issue. Can be fixed with paint as well, or if you want to, can be replaced. <laughs> However, they, that is a slight drawback of the model. And one of the main thing, or two of the main things, are missing details from the models are uh, the missing reversing di reverser disc that's usually fitted to the uh, front of the locomotive that will be flipped up when it's um, when the engine is operating in reverse. Uh, because the stand is definitely there, it's just no discs fitted to it, and missing sand pipes. Operational wise, the engine can only handle approximately um, a smaller amount of train than expected compared to the pre-release model and also operates slightly noisy, as you will see in the operation, uh, operation part of this video. But other than that, as I say, they're all minor defects and there's no reason why they can't be um, done by yourself. You can, there's no reason why they can't be fitted by yourself or fixed up um, uh, as a modeler. But, for something that is worth this much. Right, I think that probably covers most of that. I think um, we'll have a quick demo on opening up the tender, uh, fit out a decoder. And then, yeah, I think it's uh, off to the layout, if I recall. Let's have a look and see how easy it is to fit a decoder to this model. Alright, so how easy is it to DCC? These models, like most modern models these days, in terms of steam locomotives, are all have their socket fit into the um, tender. So, let's open up the tender. And we'll also have a look underneath the model while we're at it. We're just going to put this on, uh, put onto a piece of foam just so we don't damage anything. Underneath the model, you've got your, these three screws here allow you to open up this section of the um, model and allows you to get into oiling the, uh, the axles and bearings. Uh, the only two screws that we'll need for DCCing uh, or opening the shell is to remove that screw and that screw in there. So let's just quickly remove those and it'll be the screw driver. That screw is in a rather painful location. 
to be honest. That's a very, very painful location to get out. And the shell should come off pretty nicely. You can, of course, uncouple the um, tender from the locomotive if, if it makes things easier. You know, it looks like you do have to take off the um, plug. That's a silly design. There we go. Rather fiddly little process actually. Didn't recall it saying anything about you having to take it, uh, take it off the plug first. But there we go. So, um, we can see here we have our 21 pin blanking plate right there. And then just a, supposedly should be a keep, uh, hopefully some form of um, capacitor and uh, circuit. Uh, and obviously those are wired up into the tail lights. Yeah, not too, not the hardest. Just remember, you do have to pull off the um the connector to pull off the shell, uh, and yeah. So we'll put it back to uh, put it back together and head back to the layout. Alright, time for a quick voltage test on um, uh, for the J's. Uh, as we can see, we've currently got it plugged up to the outer a voltmeter connected to the outer loop. Hopefully, the screen is semi visible. Uh, so we can see the headlight does start up a lot earlier than uh, its power up. Uh, we are using a Gauge Master Combi for all these, uh, just to keep it standardized. All the reviews will use a gauge in some form of a Gauge Master Combi if it's either unit A or unit B. But... So that was a uh, startup voltage is higher than the stopping voltage, which is uh, which is kind of not uh, weird which is about 3.5, 3.6 volts. Your stopping voltage is... Not 100% sure, to be honest. Well, whatever that was. <laughs> about that, about... 1.8 volts so definitely one of the higher um, uh, voltage um, starts that we have um, for most models but there you go at approximately 50% power the model travel is at about this speed all right let's have a look at a bit of its I know, haulage capacity, I guess? Alright, for haulage, we are going to... Well, realistically, it's just... A, a haulage test can be done differently, and for the sake of this, is we're not going to be doing it. 100% correctly, not uh, not at the moment. Any, not in terms of these review videos, we're just going to keep an accurate sort of haulage test. Um, so, we are going to load the J with... A fleet of Decision E carriages. There should be six of them if I can count. <laughs> so that's the plan, anyways. Um, each carriage weighs for approximately 160 grams, with the exception of the last one at 155 due to being a first class carriage. Um, there is no CE because those are also differently weighted. 
um, and they've all pretty much have the, the same rolling resistance and actually pretty clear rolling res resistance. So let's see, let's see how the J goes with um, uh, with this load, and we'll take off a carriage at a time until it um, has a, ca a capable haulage power. Um, of course, we'll keep this different differentiating between uh, passenger and freight. Um, engines which primarily ha handle freight operations will uh, will take on freight wagons instead. As I don't have any of the freight wagons that the J would have ran, we're running it based on heritage operations. That is passenger. So let's give her a roll. And let's see how she handles with it, anyways. Yes, so we can see that won't work. So let's just go and quickly cut off. Um, I say cut off two. Uh, well, I would actually say cut off two of them. But we'll cut off one, the 150 gram carriage. With one cut off, let's see how she goes again. Again, a no. <laughs> Once again, let's remove one more carriage. Again, haulage capacity tests will be based on specifically what they are, uh, and will all be tested on the same uh, from the same starting curve uh, to make sure that we have some sort of um, same standard. Of course, when the layout is changed in the future, then we'll restart all our judgments based on that. But for now, this is how we can go. She is also traveling straight onto an 18-inch corner. Four carriages. He's taking off. We can definitely tell that she's struggling a little bit with this four car rate, especially up the hills, but she's able to handle it and she's able to do uh, to run around the loop. So, what is that? Do you see the uh, math of uh, how many carriages you can carry on the screen? Um, of course, again, this is um, subjective on what layout it's running on and um, condition of obviously the track, carriages, and all that sort of stuff. But we're just, um, in terms of realism stake, you can, uh, this is about what, what you can take, so, and, so keep that subjective on the locomotive. Right, I think next up is how heavy does she weigh? Right, just simply, let's pop her onto the scales. The engine plus tender, this is of course the old burner, not the coal burner, is 294 grams. Engine itself is 228 grams. And the old tender is 66 grams.
and there we are. I hope you guys have enjoyed joining us for this, um, well, more or less long term review um, of the Exxon Models um, J Class, Return Virus J Class locomotives. Of course, covering J's. 515 and 549. Uh, we've had them both running uh, on two separate trains to kind of give some form of realistic load to them. Uh, remember, all anything that's um, said in this review is more or less subjective, but that's how they are six months, well, more like eight months uh, after uh, first acquiring them. They're definitely good models, they definitely seem like they're going to last. Uh, were they a bit more hyped up than uh, originally thought? A little, but other than that, they do, do perform really well and overall are uh, great additions to anyone's fleet. Especially seeing that uh, there should be a new run of Exxon uh, J-Class models coming out in the, uh, in the not too distant future. In any case, until then, Thank you for, uh, until next time, thank you all for watching, hope you guys have enjoyed, and we'll see you all in the next MTMR Model Railway video.